Okay, here are the pieces of the two horsepower, three phase motor. Um, this is the stator portion, and you can see the three phase copper windings in here. When I clean this up, I use alcohol, just spray inside there. It evaporates pretty fast, but it still is a solvent. So it uh, takes out any dirt and, and uh, grease that might be in there. But it doesn't harm the windings or the insulation, uh, nor does it hurt the uh, varnish on the windings either. Both sides look pretty good. Uh, no evidence of burning or any kind of shorts any place, so I'm pretty happy with that. This is the rotor, uh, the iron core rotor portion. No moving parts here other than it just spins. Now you can see there's these balancing nubs. And if you ever take these apart, make sure you don't damage these or if they're bent, leave them alone because they're used there to balance. And you can see this one, whoever did it, had a heck of a time getting it balanced because they had to add, actually add weights on one side, both here and here. Looks pretty garbled up, but it's it's uh, it's needed to balance the motor. Shaft, and then a simple fan just to keep the air moving. Two end caps. These are pretty normal bearings fit right here, and there's brand new bearings for it. Uh, don't be afraid to replace these bearings. You get a brand new motor basically if you get new bearings. Six bucks for the big one and three bucks for the little one. Very simple. We're just going to seat this first bearing with the rubber hammer. Be careful with these bearings so you don't destroy them before you get them in. You want to make sure these end caps get lined up correctly. Make sure they're square with the base and lined up with each other. Slide the rotor in carefully, don't bang anything up, and then we'll just seat that shaft into the bearing. This bearing's inside diameter is actually smaller than the shaft at normal temperatures. So you have to do some special treatment here for this thing. It's, it's about a two or three thousandths difference, but that can be made up by just heating up the bearing. What I do is put it on an incandescent bulb. The pointy ones are nice, as you can see. Don't let it get too hot, though. 200 degrees maybe is about all you can do. And don't tell my wife I used her fancy lamp. Slides on nice. It's a good feeling to see that bearing slip on there nice. Now the final end cap goes on. And this is just a snug fit around the outer race. And it'll just work itself on. Now you slide in the bolts. And if the housing caps on either side are straight, they'll slide right in. And you want to be very careful that they're straight, 
so that the bolts, when you tighten them up, you're not going to torque the casing, which might distort it enough where the rotor contacts against the stator, and that's going to be bad. Here we're putting in the nuts on the screws. Make, again, make sure those end caps are lined up properly. Tighten everything up, and then we're pretty much done. And we'll put it on the bench and test this with power from the VFD drive. Okay, the motor's all put back together and I've set it on my workbench to just uh, temporarily just so I could bolt it down and run the VFD against the motor to just to see how it felt. I ran this about 10 minutes at 60 hertz. It feels really good. It's, there's no vibration. The bearings are cold. So I'm real happy with the rebuilt motor here. I've got the VFD drive set up to go to a maximum of 200 hertz, which will run the motor up about three and a half times faster than it normally is designed to go. Just to make sure everything seems to be working, which it does. And also just kind of shows you the versatility of this VFD. So here we go. 60 hertz, that's normal. Just to show you the versatility of this VFD, I'm going to run it down to one hertz, and you can see what this VFD drive can do for you. It provides a very convenient variable speed motor now from three phase, which was very difficult to use in a place like mine. I don't have three phase service, so you have to throw this three phase motor away and put a single phase motor in. You just couldn't use it, but with these VFD drives now. You can buy a $200 VFD and you can put new life into this old, uh, old motor. And it's very flexible. Here it is at one hertz. You can even kind of feel the pulses in the motor. We'll put it back up to 60 hertz and then we'll call it a good test. There's the normal speed. This thing should run for 20 years now with new bearings. Now the original bearings to this motor uh, required a periodic greasing. So there's a grease fitting here and a cavity that ran down to the motor. Well, the new bearings are uh, greaseless. They're sealed forever. So I'm going to remove this grease fitting and I'm going to replace it with just simply a, a screw with some Loctite on it so it'll never come out. I don't want anybody to accidentally try to grease this thing because the grease doesn't have any part to go and it could actually come back and go into the motor which I don't want. And this is just a piece of leftover part I got. It happened to be the right size. OK, 
Okay. Paint that over and we're done.